In today's show, we're gonna talk about building retirement that brings joy to your life versus having retiree regret. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Money podcast with Scott Searins, teaching you how to thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. Welcome to The Retirement Show, all about your life, your money, and your retirement. I'm your host, Scott Searins, and my goal is to help you thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. And today, we're gonna talk about retiree regrets. And then we're gonna cap off the show with a question, a listener question, all about should they spend it now or save for later? They're in retirement, and which should they do trying to find the balance, which I guess kind of coincides with today's show all about retiree regret. And Where did that come from? How did it pop up? Why is it the topic of today's show? Well, I recently came across an article that said seven biggest regrets of retirees, which just the title actually just kind of got me thinking about my own life. Because as soon as I saw that, I was like, hey, what are some things that I regret? And I'm guessing maybe you don't, but a lot of us, I mean, we do, we, we have regrets in life. I mean, I can, and as soon as I saw that, like it clicked right to my mind, the regrets that that I had, one being a, um, a pretty big doctor's appointment for my parents that, that I had missed, that I um, wasn't a part of. Uh, another regret was missing a friend's out of town 40th birthday party, missing a cousin's wedding, um, a college friend of mine, I, I missed his wedding. And some of these were for reasons because of work, meaning that I was working and that's why I missed it. Um, And some of the reasons were financial reasons. Either way, as soon as I saw the word regrets, I mean, these four or five things just popped into my mind immediately. And, And so what does that mean? Well, regrets suck. I mean, regrets kind of linger along with them, with us. And it's, it's just something that kind of lives with us forever. And so, What I thought we could do is talk today in regards to how do we avoid these regrets when it comes to our retirement? How do we get to the end of our retirement years and look back and you say, hey, you know what? I really got done what I wanted to get done. I really got accomplished what I wanted to get accomplished. And so then I opened up the article, right? So, and I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes so that way you can can look at it as well. But what I find is when a lot of these articles talk about regrets of, you know, retirees or re- retirement regrets, what I find out is a lot of them are written by financial advisors. For instance, this one talks about one of the retirement regrets was not being diversified enough. Now, you know what, we've met with lots and lots of people. We help lots of people with their retirements and nobody has come into our office to say, gosh, I really wish I was more diversified in my retirement. That's not what I hear, but what I have heard, what I have heard is I wish I would have retired earlier. I wish I would have retired one to two years earlier because I would have gotten to spend more time with my family, more time with my kids, more time with my grandkids or with my friends. And so how do we avoid those kind of regrets? How do we avoid having, help avoid having those types of thoughts linger on with you through retirement? And so that's what I wanted to talk about today is is kind of talk about some areas, not the financials, have you saved enough and regret not saving enough? Because I'll tell you, you're probably getting close to retirement or already in retirement, Hey, it is what it is. You've saved what you've saved. But now how do we take what you've saved and make sure that you don't have um, regrets through retirement? So instead of those financial <laughs> written articles that you're going to you know, regret not being diversified or regret not saving enough or regret not putting money into your HSA, let's talk about those things that might be lingering regrets just like I've had. Because one of the things that I've heard from a lot of clients is that the older they get, the faster time goes by. And life will go by fast. And unless you take the time to think about what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, put it down on paper and put a plan behind it and then actually put action behind it. If you don't do any of those things, well, then it's not going to happen. And that's what leads to regret. So here's the thing. Let's talk about a couple 
different phases of life first. And then we're going to use what I found from actually an article that did help in kind of coming up with today, plus what I have heard from clients and I want to bring this all to you. There was an article from US News and it was titled 10 retirees share their biggest regrets. Hey, perfect. You're not hearing from a financial advisor. 10 retirees share their biggest financial regrets. Retirees, people just like you, what is it that they were potentially reg regretting in their retirement? And how do we help avoid that? And so I'll link to that in the show notes. And I'm going to pull from that article as we put everything to together here today and talk to you because it, to me, these regrets really kind of fall into the two, I'll call it phases of retirement. Phase number one being the go-go years of your life. Maybe you've heard it called that before, and that would be those years where you're youngest and healthiest, those years of your retirement where you're looking to potentially do more. And then we go into the slow-go years of retirement where just kind of like it sounds, well, we're not able to go out as much. We're not able to do as many things. And so we might not be leaving the house or our home as much in those slow-go years as we could potentially in the go-go years. Now, each area, as I started to kind of put this together from what I have found in working with clients, as well as from this article, is each area has kind of their own topics of potential regrets. And the slow-go years have regrets too. And you might be thinking, well, I'm not there yet. I'll just listen to the first part because that's later on in life. But actually, those regrets, those regrets that you might have in those years are things that you need to help think about today, that you need to talk about today, that you need to come up with some ideas and potentially plan for today so you don't have those regrets in your slow-go years. So let's talk about the go-go years, those years where you're youngest and healthiest. Here's some of the regrets that I see or that I hear or in my opinion could be regrets that potentially linger on or you look backwards and go, oh man, I really wish um, I would have done things differently. First off, one regret that I find is people waited too long to retire. Waited too long. When do you want to retire? I mean, that was one thing that I heard from uh, one person in their 70s is I wish I would have retired sooner. And for them, it was because, like I mentioned earlier, they wanted to spend time with their family, with their spouse, with their children, with their grandchildren, go to all their grandchildren's games while they're, you know, young and, and growing up and enjoy that while they can. And it was easier for them to get around. And they said, you know what? We missed a couple years of that. And I wish I would have done that differently. So when you think about your life, when is it that you want to retire? And here's the thing. I realize retirement's not for everyone. Maybe that isn't what you want to do, but maybe you want to go part time or you want to stay on full time or you do want to go into full time retirement or you just want to take more vacations and you want to enjoy more time for different reasons. But what is your overall timeline? And, you know, as I go through every point today and I'm going to wrap it up at the end of each section and, and kind of tell you what you need to put in place to do so. But but just remember this. I'm not saying, hey, if you don't have the funds to go, just go and do something and go into a bunch of debt. I'm not here to say that. I'm just saying, hey, what are things that you can do within your means? And, you know, is it important to you to spend some more time with either your spouse or for life or just your job is wearing you down and you need to take a break from it? And if so, OK, when is that right time for you? So that's that's regret. We'll just call it number one. How is that? Regret number one in the go go years is waiting too long to retire. Regret number two in those go go years is not having a purpose or goals or something that you want to accomplish. So regret number two, we're just going to say no goals, no purpose, no sense of, of something that you want to accomplish. Here's what I mean. Once you retire, what is going to be getting you up in the mornings? What's going to be getting you up in the mornings? And if you think about it maybe a different way, taking a look at your final few days, uh, you know, here on earth, in your final few days, if you were to look back, what's going to be putting the biggest smile on your face? What's going to, you know, bring happiness to you? And if you look back, you're like, wow, I, I'm really happy with what I did and I don't have any regrets. I did everything that I wanted to do. 
And, and a lot of that is by bringing purpose, bringing goals to your life, bringing things that you, what is it that you want to accomplish with the funds, the retirement savings that you've worked so hard to save. And so I'm just gonna give you a few thoughts here as, as we kind of look at this little category is, um, are there activities that you wanna do in your retirement? Do you wanna travel in your retirement? Maybe that's important to you, is you've spent a lot of time working, so now you wanna go and enjoy different areas. Maybe it's volunteering or giving to charitable causes. Maybe for you, what brings that sense of accomplishment for you, not necessarily with your money, but for you is still working. So maybe you want to work. Maybe you want to consult. Maybe you want a part-time job. I have you know, one client that they retired from their full-time job and now they just work part-time at a, a local place. And you know what? It brings a ton of joy and happiness to them because that's what they love to do. I mean, I can tell you in, in regards to, to my family and I, you know, I look at um, uh, my father, for instance, he enjoys working. Working brings a sense of accomplishment to him each and every day. But you know, for everybody, it might be something different. Maybe volunteering your time, and it doesn't have to be every day, but maybe that will bring you a sense of accomplishment for your day or bring purpose to you know, your retirement life. And maybe for you, it's um, what you wanna do from like a legacy standpoint with your children or with your grandchildren. You know, a lot of times I'm seeing now kind of this new way of thinking, I'll call it, is that um, some folks understand, yes, there's going to be money that they're not going to spend in the retirement. Based on what they saved up, there's extra, there's surplus. And so what they're doing is they're helping their children or helping their grandchildren out today versus them getting that when they pass away. They're saying, hey, what can we maybe do to put them in a better financial position today? And on top of it, they get to enjoy it. So maybe it's putting money towards their mortgage or paying down some of their debts um, or paying just for some sort of renovation in their house or whatever it may be. So if you think about it, category number two here, and hopefully I've given you some ideas, things that are spurring you know, different ideas in your mind. But regret number two in those go-go years is no purpose, no goals, no idea of what you want to accomplish in your retirement. So really challenge yourself with that. What is it that you want to get done or accomplish in your retirement? And it doesn't just have to be one thing. There can be a lot of different things that you might want to accomplish with your retirement savings. You know, a lot of times I just hear maintain my lifestyle. Well, that's good as long as your lifestyle is bringing purpose and activities to your life. Because if your lifestyle was pretty much all work before and now you're going to retirement, well, it's going to be a lot different. And so now what do you want to do with that free time? Okay, regret number three in those go-go years is losing touch with family. So losing touch with family. in. You know, here's the thing, I've heard about this because children, you know, will maybe move to a different state um, and then your children are further away from you or your brothers and sisters are, are further away from you. Maybe you're holding back from traveling to go see them. And we're gonna talk about that in a second, but as I'm going through this, here's what I just want you to do. I just want you to put the ideas down. Put the ideas down on paper. Are we saying everything can happen? Not necessarily. But if we have a good paper, a good tablet of ideas, of things that you want to do in retirement, now we can, again, put a plan around them. So regret number three in those go-go years is losing touch with family. This is one that I read in the article that really, um, you know, hit home. I, I have a very close family, um, both sides, right? To, close to my wife's side of the family, close to my side of the family. And so we see each other all the time. But I, I, you know, as I was reading the article, I could see what happens. Children move away, grandkids are far from you. And next thing you know, you're, you're far from your family. You're, you're not seeing them as often, not talking to them as often. Maybe you're not traveling to see them as often as, as you would like to or should um, because something's holding you back. So have you thought maybe you should move in retirement, move closer to your family? or maybe just travel more to be able to see them. You know, I've got one client, what they're doing is they're taking family vacations each and every year. They're actually paying for their entire family, kids, grandkids, everybody, to go on a one week vacation. 
again, bringing everybody together to get that sense of closeness and just be together for that one week of time. And that helps bring them, you know, a sense of, of joy in their retirement. And so every time we meet, they say, hey, make sure part of our plan is that are we still able to do this? And we're making sure to help build that as part of their plan. Okay. Um, Let's see, what was that, number three? Let's just say number four here in the go-go years, fourth area of regret is not enjoying more upfront. And that's why I wanted to break this down into the go-go years versus the slow-go years. You see, because the go-go years, young and healthy, that's why we call them the go-go years. Slow-go years, well, that's why we call them that too, right? You're not going out as much. You might not be leaving the house as much. And so what I find is that sometimes people say, oh, well, they wanted to just maintain their lifestyle and then, you know, meet them later on in their lives. And they've got a bunch of money saved up and they're going, yeah, we probably should have done more when we we're, you know, younger. We probably should have done more in our 50s. We should, probably should have done more in our 60s, probably should have done more in our early 70s when we had our health, when we were able to get out of the house, when we were able to do those things. So I don't want this to be a regret for you either. And one of the things that we do when working with clients is what I call front loading a plan. No, I'm not saying to just go out and spend all your money in the 60s and 70s and then don't have anything and run out of money. That's not it. Not what I'm trying to say here. What I am trying to say is that you want to responsibly front load your plan, meaning using and spending more money up front during those young and healthy years, having an idea of, okay, if it's travel, how much travel do you want to do in those years? And is there a lump sum that we can put towards it for those beginning years? And then you know that, hey, okay, at age 75, we're not going to do this anymore. Age 80, we're not going to do this anymore. Um, maybe it's just extra activities. What is it that you want to do up front? I work with, uh, you know, we've got lots of clients here in Illinois, very cold state in the winters, people who want to get out of here in the winters. So we've got clients that, you know, some that'll take their RV and some that will, you know, go to a different location. We've got clients that like to snowbird because they have a second home, whatever it may be. And they're able to do all of that back and forth in those young years while they're youngest, while they're healthiest. And it's comfortable for them. So let's just wrap this up on the go-go years. Then we're gonna go into the regrets that I find not only from the article, but in, in working with clients as well, the slow go year regrets. But let's, let's wrap up here on the regrets from the go-go years. As we've gone through these, what are different things that you haven't thought about yet or that you have been thinking about but you haven't taken action on yet? Write them down, what are they? What are the things that you want to accomplish? If you're still working and you're looking into retirement, when is it that you want to retire? When is it that you want to go part time? Maybe you want to stay working. That's OK, too. What's going to give you that sense of accomplishment in your retirement? Really think about it. And if you're married, talk about it with your spouse. And if you're not, you know, talk about it with your children. Talk about it with other people. Talk about it with your friends. And here's what I think is the most powerful thing is take these thoughts and then actually get them down on paper. Once you get them down on paper, you can start putting a plan behind them. But I also want you to look at these and say, what is holding you back? What's holding you back from doing these? Is it just that you really just aren't doing them? You just need to take action? Well, that's an easy thing. Then go take some action and, and do what you need to do. Is it because of money? I'll tell you some of my regrets, you know, let's say I think one of the weddings that I didn't go on or something like that, it was from a financial standpoint. It's like, I don't know from a financial standpoint if I should be doing this or not. And I lean towards the more conservative decision. And looking back, would I have been okay? Yeah, I would have been financially okay. I would have been able to go on that trip. I wouldn't have incurred any sort of debt and everything would have been just fine. But at that point in time, it was a financial decision that was holding me back. So is it money or is it financials that are holding you back? And or is it the what ifs? Because, you know, the other things that I hear sometimes are, well, what if the market goes down? What if inflation goes up? What if, what if, what if? Here's the thing with 
all of this is you need to build a plan. Build a plan around it. And like I said, prioritize them. We're not gonna say that you be able to get all of them done. I don't know. I don't know your financial situation until we build a plan around it. But once we put all of these onto paper, put some dollar amounts to them, put some years to them. How long do you want to do them? How long do you want to travel for? How long do you want to do this activity for? How long do you want to give to the charity for? How much do you want to give? Once we put all of that together, we can start to build a plan around it. And then we can start to say, oh, here's what's actually possible in the plan. And here's what happens to the plan if the market were to go down, if interest rates were to go up, if inflation were to change, if this, if this, if this. We're able to do all the different what if scenarios. And then you can really build an income plan around it that's going to let you understand how much you can spend and hopefully have a lot less regrets in your retirement. That income plan is almost like the license to spend. And that's what I have found helps a lot of people in the retirement too, is having that license to spend. And as I had mentioned earlier, are you putting together a front loaded plan? If you're wanting to do some of these activities, are you putting together a plan that's going to help you spend more of your money up front versus saving it on for later in your retirement? Okay, so let's continue forward here because there's some more regrets to cover. And the next regrets that we're going to talk about are actually the regrets of the slow go years, those later on years in life. So in these slow go years, kind of have two regrets. Um, one that I've grabbed from the article, one that I'm going to share um, from meeting with, you know, different folks and, and different retirees. So the first one was this regret right here. I wish I would have taken my health more seriously earlier on in life. I told you these slow go year, these slow go regrets really actually go into the earlier on in life. But we don't have those regrets until we get into those slow, maybe until we get into those slow go years, because guess what? If we're not taking our health seriously, those slow go years might come a lot faster, might come at age 75 versus age 80 or age 70 versus age 75. And so that's one thing that I have found, you know, working with clients and I see too, as I work with people is those that stay active, that keep their body active, keep their mind active. It seems to help just, it seems to help them increase those go-go years. Uh, for example, a lot of clients actually, once they retire, um, I'm finding them now actually joining the gym and going out, doing different activities. Actually in my gym alone, I see uh, my wife and I, we like to do these exercise classes in the mornings and um, we'll see different retirees there in the mornings, taking the exercise classes, making sure that they're trying to help their body out as much as possible. Now, there's the physical aspect, but also what are you doing to keep your mind active? What groups are you potentially joining? Meeting with friends, whatever it might be. Um, what are you gonna do to keep your mind active in those younger years as well? So regret number one as part of the slow go years is wishing that, you know, are you gonna wish that you would have taken your health more seriously in your go-go years or even while you're you know still working and then that second regret of the slow go years well i don't know it's kind of a feeling kind of a regret it's a regret not doing something sooner in regards to it but here you go um slow go years just like we're talking about and there might be a time where your body slows down so much that you need help and when you need help have you properly set yourself up to be able to get that help? And if you haven't, that might mean then that your children are providing that help or grandchildren or family members. And so it's kind of a feeling and kind of a regret, um, but feelings that people have shared with me is like that they actually feel like they're a burden on their children because their children are having to constantly come over and help them with things and take care of things. And you know what? That takes time out of your children's life and your grandchildren's life, or whether it's your brother or sister, whomever's life, they're seeing how much time it takes out of that other person's life. And it's that feeling of, gosh, I, I need the help and I appreciate the help, but I really wishing, was wishing I wasn't a burden on this other person. 
And so it's kind of regretting not planning in advance for that. And planning in advance for that would just be some sort of plan where, okay, whether it's you know self-insuring and using your own, own funds to pay for that help that you need, or uh, you know like a long-term care plan or, or whatever it may be. So um, anyways, think about that in, in regards to your life. So, so there we go. We've got kind of two phases of retirement life and two phases of potential regrets in your retirement. So hopefully you found this helpful more on that. I found that, you know, personal finance is just that. There is finance involved, but it's way more personal than just the finance, you know, than just being finance. And so each of us have an, our own unique life that we want to live. How are you going to live your life in retirement? So that when you look back in those last few days, it just brings a smile to your face and you're not going, oh, I really wish I would have done something different. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully it spurs some ideas. Like I said, sit down, throw it on paper. So that way you can put a plan behind it. And even better, you start putting actions behind the plan. All right. So with that, let's wrap up. We've got our listener question falls right in place with what we're talking about tonight. I think you're gonna learn here from Charles. Charles says, I'm 79 years old. I've been retired for 10 years. So we retired at age 69. I think I have finally found comfort in our financial situation and I don't worry about us running out of money anymore. But now I'm thinking that we're going to have a million or more that we never spend and we don't have any kids. Should I just start spending a ton to make up for the last 10 years of pinching pennies? I have regrets about not traveling as much in the past decade. Wow, does that really fall into place? And there you go, right from a listener in regards to a retirement regret. So to answer Charles's question, yes. Yes, start spending your money now. Start enjoying it. Do it while you can. Hopefully you still have your health with you, you know, Charles, that you or you and your spouse can really go and you know still enjoy years of the money that you've saved up. Um, now here's the thing, how much do you, one of the things that you still wanna you know, be cautious about, not cautious about, you still wanna understand here, Charles, is how much do you need to maintain your lifestyle? So make sure you've got a good handle on that. Have you planned for some of those slow go regrets that I talked about earlier in the event that you need help in the future? So you got those two down, then the third part would be the surplus like you're talking about. Understand your surplus. If you know what your surplus is, then go and enjoy it. Do it now, hurry, go, enjoy the, enjoy the money while you're young and healthy. 79 years old, if you're asking about this, you didn't say you have any health issues, hopefully you still you know, get multiple years out of enjoying this money that you've worked so hard to, to save. Um, whether that's travel, whether that's activities that you want to do, whether that could be even giving to a charity. And now that you're you know, in your 70s, you could do qualified charitable distributions if that money were to sit into an IRA. Or I know you said you didn't have children, but um, who are your beneficiaries? How are you hoping to help them out? They were going to get some of this funds when you, know, you pass away. Could you enjoy some of this money with them now? And maybe that'll bring some joy to you too. You'll see them enjoying the money. That brings joy to them. Maybe it brings joy to you. So Charles, thanks so much for sending in your question. It's probably going to help out a lot of people listening today and make them think about how can they build a front-loaded plan, a plan where we're going to help spend more money up front, but knowing that we can also make it last. So to wrap up, if you want to live a retirement without regret, you're wondering when you can retire or when you can go part time or how do you manage full time retirement or working and plus taking off some big vacations. If you're wondering how much you can spend in retirement, if you're wondering how to spend more money up front in retirement and make the money last. Well, we can help you out with all those questions. You can go to lifemoneyshow.com and click on the work with us tab. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's show. If so, don't forget, subscribe on your favorite podcast player. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button there as we're coming out with new videos each week in regards to topics like this, topics on social security and how to also minimize the taxes on your IRAs and 401ks. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.
Insurance products are offered through the insurance business Searns Financial Management, Inc. Searns Financial Group, Inc. is an investment advisory practice that offers products and services through AE Wealth Management, LLC, AEWM, a registered investment advisor. AEWM does not offer insurance products. The insurance products offered by Searns Financial Management, Inc. are not subject to investment advisor requirements. AEWM and Searns Financial Group, Inc. are not affiliated companies. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as a sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Please remember that converting an employer plan account to a Roth IRA is a taxable event. Increased taxable income from the Roth IRA conversion may have several consequences including, but not limited to, a need for additional tax withholding or estimated tax payments, the loss of certain tax deductions and credits, and higher taxes on Social Security benefits and higher Medicare premiums. Be sure to consult with a qualified tax advisor before making any decisions regarding your IRA. Searns Financial Group, Inc. is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Searns Financial Group, Inc. Scott Searns, Scott Searns Financial Group, and AE Wealth Management LLC are not affiliated with The Wall Street Journal, Fidelity Investments, Charles Schwab, or The New York Times.